Hey everyone, Darren Eastman here, product manager for GitLab Women, joined with by Gina Doyle. Uh, um, designer for GitLab as well, GitLab Runner, and some other groups as well. Anyway, today is the 50.0 Runner Team Iteration Kickoff video. So, Gina, I'll pass it over to you to discuss some of the cool things that's being worked on in the Runner Fleet category. Okay, awesome. I'll share my screen. All right, so I'll walk through um, what our development team is going to be taking on for Runner Fleet. And just as a reminder, Runner Fleet is around managing. Um, large pools of runners in the admin view and in the group view. So today we're for 15.0, we're focusing on automatically purging runners that have been inactive for a long time. A lot of customers are really interested in this. Um, and we're going to start with just allowing for this to be done in the API. So there is no, not going to be a front end um, capability attached to this for the MVC, but we will allow folks to be able to do this through the API. The second one that we're going to be looking at is improving the edit view of runners in the admin area. Um, so there's, I'll just quickly go through a quick mop, mock up here. There is an edit view today that you, if you're an admin at the instance level, you can edit your runners, um, including like configuration, job timeout, stuff like that, and then um, editing the assigned projects. And we're just ramping that up to be more uh, pajamas compliant and then making it easier to use in general. And then the last two are adding a token reset audit event when a runner's registration token is reset. We have the capability to track some events with runners today, um, but it's pretty limited right now. So we are adding the ability to see when you reset um, a runner's registration token in that audit stream so you'll be able to see that and then lastly we're working on creating a clear root project for project runners today when you have a project runner you can share it across many projects and there's not really a capability to be able to see where that runner originated from so we're going to make that clear with adding a root project um, and that's going to be in the back end first so then we'll show it in the in the front end, which carries over to my UX issues as well, which I'll jump into the association column that we're going to be adding to the runners table in the admin area. Um, so like I said, with project runners, they can be shared across many projects, but also group runners are attached to specific groups and we don't we don't show that at all in the table today um, in the admin area. So we'd like to add this new column for um, displaying what the association of that runner is. Um, and then if it's an, in a shared runner, for example, we would say that the association is instance. And the other issue I'll be working on is improving the runner table design. If you have seen our admin table today, it's there's a lot of information on it. It's pretty limited space-wise. Um, and the responsiveness isn't great right now. So we're playing around with changing it into more of a list view. Um, you can see a little sneak peek of what we're, we've been working on thus far, but it should help us add more data um, in the future, as well as this association column and additional like ownership columns that we'll be adding in the future. That's it from the runner fleet side. So I'll pass it to you, Darren. Oh, thanks, you that's awesome. It's so much great progress on Runner Fleet. It's um, a lot of great value being added and improvements in usability. Super. Um, so back to the rest of the Runner Group. Um, since, and for everyone that's looking at, at the, um, the video, here is our Runner Team Iteration Plan issues. So if you want to take a quick look um, or more detailed look at some of the things that are happening. Um, but first thing I want to call your attention to is that of obviously 15 and over, it's a major release. Um, so we have a number of removals planned in 15 and 0, and they're under this section here. So you can take a look at what's planned um, specifically for runner core as, as it relates to removals in 15.0. Um, and this obviously will be communicated as part of our, our regular release process at when 15.0 comes out as well. But here are the lists of things for 15.0 that we're removing. Um, in terms of new development that's happening in runner core in 15.0, um, because we have to do breaking changes, so that's taking a part of our capacity. 
The other focus area from an investment capacity perspective is on bugs and, and, and security issues first, and then moving into resolving our age backlog of S2 bugs. So that's so you see here in 15 and 0, three things that are currently on deck are some security issues and security bugs that we're working on. And then the other thing that we're working on, or I'm hoping to get to in 15 and 0 from a bug perspective is making progress on the specific document sheet preparation fail bug. It's one of many age um, severity two bugs that we want to get, um, we want to eliminate from the backlog. In terms of new features, uh, we don't have a significant number of new features planned for 15.0. The one thing that we do hope to ship in 15.0, which coincides with some work that's happening over um, with our alliance partners, is adding support for Red Hat's Podman to GitLab runners and executor type. So there's a lot of work happening right now behind the scenes in terms of testing the latest version of Podman um, with GitLab Runner. The value proposition of this is obvious, uh, is, I say it's obvious, but the value proposition is for those customers and users that are on RHEL. Um, RHEL today, it's no longer, as you know, supporting Docker. It has, everything has moved over the Podman builder. And the, that framework is to, ha is to have Podman be a supported, first class supported executor type on the RHEL operating system. And so this, there's a lot of interest from users and customers um, for this particular feature. And so we're, we're really hoping that the testing of the latest versions of Pod, the latest version of Podman um, passes so that we can ship uh, a supported GitLab runner for Podman in 15.0. Um, I'm gonna skip over the tech deck and tech debt and R&D sections and go on to run a SaaS. For run a SaaS in 15.0, the team's main focus is on transitioning the GitLab SaaS for Mac OS runners. This is basically if you are a customer on GitLab SaaS um, and you want to take advantage of a Mac OS build environment natively on GitLab SaaS. Today, we have been for the past 12 months or so offering um, customers and open source customers access to our beta program. And 15 and 0, we are transitioning that to limited availability. So the goal would be to offer um, get that size for Mac OS runners to customers in premium and ultimate and to open source customers that are part of our open source program. So uh, as things um, progress over the next few weeks towards the 15.0 release, um, that's when we will, as 15.0 comes up, we'll have the related blog post with additional information in terms of how to use um, the pricing structure and those types of things. But so the main goal for us um, for 15.0 for runner size is getting and they get left SaaS for Mac OS runners LA um, shipped to customers. So that's it for 15.0. Um, a lot of great things are happening um, on Runner Fleet. So I'm super excited to see that, Gina. Thanks to you and the team as well. Any other parting words before we hang up? All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining, and we'll see you next time um, here on our Runner Kickoff videos. Have a great day.